So today we're comparing the Pixel 8 Pro against the Pixel 7 Pro, but I'm also gonna be introducing the iPhone 15 Pro Max when I talk about the camera, because I wanna know if the Pixel 8 Pro has the best camera of 2023. For those of you who own a Pixel 7 Pro, not much of an upgrade for you. Most of the updates are down to AI, and if those specific features are important for you, fine. But everything else, like these are very minor updates, no phone year over year is really a big upgrade anymore, so hold on to your devices for a bit longer. Now before I begin, a quick message from today's sponsor. The HP EliteBook 845G9 laptop is so easy to repair, it only took 10 minutes to open it up and replace the RAM. All I had to do was remove five screws, slide off the bottom lid, and add another stick to the available RAM slot. But the best part is there's a full detailed guide available on HP Support's YouTube channel that shows step-by-step -step instructions on how to upgrade the RAM along with other components such as your SSD. The HP Support YouTube channel has thousands of videos to help maintain, upgrade, and even fix any potential issues with select HP laptops and products. Make sure to check out the link below to learn more. First of all, I love this blue color. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It just gives a nice contrast to the device and it really stands out compared to other colors that are currently available on the market. Plus they went with a frosted back. Like look at the difference in terms of how the phone looks. On the old Pixel 7 Pro, it's very glossy. You can see things shining off the back. It also really attracts fingerprints like crazy. But this, like I can be touching it all day, you're not gonna see anything. Both phones are pretty much the exact same height, the exact same thickness, and pretty much the exact same weight. There's not a difference in terms of how it feels in your hand, except that with the Pixel 7, it might feel a little bit thinner, even though technically it's not, because of those curved edges. On the newer model, they went completely flat, and you guys know how I feel about flat displays. They're superior to anything that has an edge on it. It just makes holding the phone and it also makes typing significantly easier. But besides that, like everything else is pretty much in the same spot. You know, like you have your button placement on the right hand side with the volume rocker on the button bottom. The buttons are super clicky. The haptics on the Pixel 8 Pro are so good. Like really good. Like you're typing on this thing and if you want the haptics on, it feels really, really nice on the Pixel 8 Pro. Now, I don't think it's pr as pretty as let's say the S23 Ultra or some of the other devices out there, but when you see this phone, you definitely know you're rocking a Pixel device. The camera bump on the back also looks a bit different. Like there's bigger lenses now. There's a 48 megapixel ultra wide lens, which they don't have on the Pixel 7 Pro. It's just regular 12 megapixels. So the camera cutout is a little bit wider to compensate. Plus this year, they added a temperature sensor, which allows you to get to about two centimeters or about an inch from whatever material you want to measure and get a fairly accurate result. Like I was testing this on some hot water, like boiling water, and it didn't get it perfectly, but it was close enough that I know whatever I was pointing at was obviously hot. Now speaker's placement is exactly the same. Top speaker right above the camera cutout, bottom speaker on the bottom right of the phones. But the weird thing is, I actually found the speakers to sound better on the Pixel 7 Pro compared to the Nero one. The speed of the fingerprint sensor is just as fast as last year's model, but this year you have a more proper face ID. It's supposed to be a little bit more secure than what the Pixel 7 Pro offers. Honestly, I don't know how they're doing that. Okay, like I don't know how they're doing that because there's basically just a camera. There's no infrared sensor. It doesn't have the same sensors that Face ID uses on the iPhone, but apparently it's supposed to be more secure. I will say though, that if you do use that camera to unlock your face at nighttime, good luck. It just doesn't work. Like it only works when there's enough light. As soon as it gets a little bit dark, forget it. You have to default to the actual fingerprint scanner. The other thing is the display. Like they're both 6.7 inches. They both look fantastic, but fun fact, the display on the Pixel 7 Pro is actually a bit more pixel dense because it's using a slightly different aspect ratio. Now, obviously it's really hard to tell because the difference is so minor, but I thought I'd let you guys know. The cool thing though, is that the display on the Pixel 8 Pro is ridiculously bright. And I mean like insanely bright. One of the most brightest screens I've seen on a smartphone so far, 2400 nits is its peak brightness compared to about 1600 on the Pixel 7 Pro. Now I ran performance test mobile on both of these devices and there is a significant difference with the newer Pixel 8 Pro. Like right off the bat, you can see the system is 
overall faster, 19,000 compared to 1,100. CPU tests are also significantly faster than the previous model. RAM tests are still faster, but not by much. And the SSD speeds, interestingly, are faster on the previous Pixel 7 Pro. So there's faster SSDs inside of here in some instances, depending on what you're copying. But graphics, huge difference, like huge difference for graphics. Even with 3D graphics, you're seeing a little bit of a performance uplift with the new Pixel 8 Pro. But I did test 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme to see how the CPU gets stressed out. And yes, the Pixel 8 Pro does get warm, just like the Pixel 7 Pro, even a little bit hotter. In fact, during the test, it averaged temperatures between 33 to 46 degrees Celsius compared to 32 to 42 degrees Celsius on the Pixel 7 Pro. It did have slightly higher frame rates, but it did use more battery. 10% battery compared to 7% on the Pixel 7 Pro. Now this is not a big deal for like daily stuff. It's not gonna make a difference. But if you're someone who's buying these devices to be some sort of mobile professional gamer, where you're pushing this thing all day long, then it might make a difference to you. I will say though, that the wireless charging is the same on both phones, but the wire charging is now at 30 watts compared to 23 watts on last year's model. So I'm running Android 14 on both of these phones, but there's obviously a newer build on this Pixel 8 Pro. And there's little differences depending on the type of menu you're in. Like for example, if you're in the camera and you wanna swipe up to get more settings, it brings it from the bottom on the Pixel 8 Pro, whereas on the Pixel 7 Pro, it kind of places it in the middle of the menu. You also get the option to go directly into Pro Mode, which allows you to change the aperture and the shutter and get a little bit more granular. Whereas on the Pixel 7 Pro, you kind of don't have that option. But, you know, performance wise, like scrolling through the menus, they're both 120 Hertz, so they feel fast and fluid. I'm not seeing a big difference there. Apps load up around the same time. I'm not seeing that much of a difference with the Pixel 8 Pro, but there's a few little features, you know? For example, like if I go to the wallpapers on the Pixel 8 Pro, I have the option to play around with AI wallpaper, which the previous model does not have. Now it's kind of cool, you know, like you can take certain themes and get started with them. So for example, if you want more of a mineral theme, you can click on that and then type a bunch of words so that it takes them and creates something based on what you want. But it does take a little while. Like I'll be waiting here for about 15 seconds in order for it to create this image. Obviously this is not happening on the phone. It's being sent to the cloud and then it's coming back to your device and it's processing it online. So kind of annoying if you're offline, it also takes a little bit longer. So this is the image it came up with. Actually not bad, you know, like it's not a bad looking image. I hit the little check mark at the top and then I can choose between home and lock screen and it automatically changes the colors of the icons to match the background, which is the wallpaper. Now, eventually they're gonna become with these more live focused wallpapers that kind of change depending on the type of day. They're not here yet, but I'm assuming that will be a pixel drop, which will come out sometime in the near future. But battery life is obviously one of the most important topics with the Pixel 8 Pro. If you're using your camera a lot, it will melt through your battery quite quickly. On a super heavy day, and I mean like ridiculously heavy, playing games, using the camera like crazy, like nonstop using my phone, I only averaged around five hours of screen on time. On lighter days where I'm just like doing normal stuff as a normal human, I would end the day with like 50%, sometimes 45%. So it really depends on the type of user you are. It's definitely not the best battery life I've used this year so far, but it's very respectable. It just comes down to how hard you use your phone and probably very similar to last year's Pixel 7 Pro. The front facing camera situation is kind of interesting because on the Pixel 7 Pro, it's a 10.8 megapixel lens and on the new Pixel 8 Pro, it's 10.5. And I did a bunch of tests with these. Like normal pictures look pretty equal on both devices, but as soon as you pop open the video when you use your front facing camera, personally, I think it looks better on the Pixel 8 Pro. So right now you're looking at the front facing camera of the Pixel 8 and the, or not Pixel 8, Pixel 8 Pro and the Pixel 7 Pro. You guys let me know which one looks better and obviously which microphone sounds better between these two lovely devices. Now with a lot of these new features being AI, they introduced a new feature called Magic Eraser. And this allows you to record something and if you're talking and there's background noise, you can process the video and then remove the background noise. Now it works well if it's in a situation where the background noise is not consistent, it's not too loud and it's kind of far away. But if you have an object up close, so like I took a video of 
controller with another phone playing white noise, it helped out big time. Like it made a big difference in the audio, but it didn't completely remove it. So right now you are watching a video of me recording an Xbox controller. I know how exciting, but right now there is white noise in the background. So this is what it sounds like without applying the magic audio eraser. So let's see what it can do. So right now you are watching a video of me recording an Xbox controller. I know how exciting, but right now there is white noise in the background. So this is what it sounds like without applying the magic audio eraser. So let's see what it can do. The one thing Google phones always do well is Google Assistant. It's like the most accurate in terms of detecting your voice, responding to you the most instantly, and it also does a very good job of transcribing your words. If you ever use the voice recorder app on either of these devices, it can literally live transcribe what you're saying onto the phone. I thought maybe this year the Pixel 8 Pro would do it faster, but it's identical to the Pixel 7 Pro, so I'm not seeing an upgrade there. Now the camera is probably the most important feature of a Pixel just because they take such fantastic photos. And this year they're both rocking a 50 megapixel wide lens. The apertures are a bit different. The telephoto lens on both of these devices are also 48 megapixels, but the ultra wide lens has changed. The Pixel 7 Pro, 12 megapixels. This new Pixel 8 Pro, it's now 48. So there's a lot more information to play with. But look, I took a lot of pictures and I can't say there's much of a difference. If you're taking photos during the daytime, they look almost identical. But don't get me wrong, sometimes the Pixel 8 Pro was a little bit more sharper, a little bit cleaner, but overall it wasn't a significant improvement. The only area where I saw a big update with this new sensor was when I was taking pictures with a lot of glare. Like if you're pointing at the sun or if there's glare somewhere, you'll get purple fringing on the Pixel 7 Pro. The Pixel 8 Pro has completely removed that, which is really, really cool. But the ultra wide lens, even the telephoto lens, they look pretty equal compared to both of these devices. But the one area where I saw a big improvement is comparing it to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'm sorry, the iPhone 15 Pro Max takes great photos, but the Pixel 8 Pro and even the 7 Pro are still the king. Like the photos just look so good on the Pixel 7 Pro and 8 Pro. And like, don't get me wrong, the iPhone Pro does make things look a bit more contrasty. It's a little bit more yellow, but the Pixel 8 Pro looks more realistic. There's still a bit of proper contrast. And most importantly, the dynamic range is so much better. Like I'd be shooting the phone directly at the sun and the Pixel 8 Pro was still able to pick up details on the sides of a building. Whereas on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, those details were completely lost. Now again, the moral of the story here is AI and the Pixel 8 Pro introduces a couple of new features for the camera, such as one called Best Take. I tried it, sometimes it works great, other times it does not. There's one situation where I took a photo of my daughter, my wife, and my son. It couldn't detect my son's face, so I wasn't able to change his face in terms of the way it looks. Whereas my daughter and my wife, I could do it. Because they didn't move that much, the differences in the way they look are very minor, but it could be the difference between having a good photo and a great photo. In a situation where my son's moving around a lot and his face is constantly changing, that's where it works very well. Like I was able to choose a silly face and then change it to a more serious one. But again, it doesn't look good all the time and then you have to send it to the cloud for it to process. So you do have to wait for the best take option to start working when you select the photo that you wanna edit. There's also other tools like being able to unblur and blur the background. This personally, I'd probably use more than best take just because there are some photos, you'll take a picture of a subject, the background is way too busy and a little blur brings the subject into the foreground. And just like last year's Pixel 7 Pro, you have magic erasers. So if there's something in the background you don't wanna look at or if it's getting in the way of the shot, you can completely erase it. And again, sometimes it works great. Other times it just makes things look a little bit messy. Now nighttime shots were interesting because the Pixel 8 Pro and Pixel 7 Pro pretty much look identical. Most of the shots have the same sort of look and feel. Again, sometimes the Pixel 8 Pro slightly better, but overall it's not a massive improvement compared to last year's model. And to be honest, it's quite hard to beat. The Pixel 7 Pro took fantastic nighttime shots. So it's hard to like make those nighttime shots even better. But I do see tiny little small improvements. It's just, they're not that drastic. Again, the only area the Pixel 8 Pro excels at night is when there's a light source that's offering a lot of glare. The Pixel 7 Pro will introduce a lot of purple fringing, whereas that's no longer there on the Pixel 8 Pro. If you're comparing it to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it gets very interesting because sometimes the iPhone 15 Pro Max does look better. But I find with the iPhone, there's a lot of yellow and I don't like that. You know, I found that the Pixel 8 Pro did a better job of a more realistic 
nighttime shot. Also, the iPhone 15 Pro Max tends to overexpose lights, whereas the Pixel and even Samsung phones tend to do a lot better job with exposure. Like, don't get me wrong, it wasn't always perfect on the Pixel 8 Pro. I just found that it was slightly better. But the front-facing camera at night is better on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I found the image looks a little bit cleaner, whereas on the Pixel 8 Pro, it was very, very mushy. So right now you're looking at the front-facing camera of the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Pixel 8 Pro. I'm staring directly at the sun, so let's see which phone handles that better. Now I'm going to turn around so the sun is off my face and the camera's facing it. But yeah, you guys let me know which one sounds better and obviously which one actually looks better. 4K video is interesting because it is a little bit better on the Pixel 8 Pro. It's definitely an improvement, but it's not a massive improvement. I did find the image to be a slightly bit more sharper and contrasty and overall more appealing. Stabilization is pretty equal on both devices when it comes to 4K 30. But compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the Pixel 8 Pro is obviously not as good. The iPhone for 2023 is still at the top for having one of the best video cameras on a smartphone today. The weird thing though is when it came to active mode, like their stabilization mode where it keeps everything steady, they both shoot at the same resolution, which is 1080p, but I did find that the stabilization on the Pixel 7 Pro was better than the Pixel 8 Pro. Now, obviously you can also do weird things like blur video, which you may find useful or not, but there's some situations where you might want to blur out the background if it's a bit too noisy. So the Pixel 8 Pro has some nice little updates, brighter display, slightly better camera system, it has a design that's not as smudgy when you touch it and just feels more comfortable to hold and obviously type on. Now they did go back on some stuff like a worse front facing camera. And there's also a bunch of AI features that you may or may not find useful. And a conversation starter with the thermometer, even though you probably won't use it that often. But the big question that comes to my mind is, is it worth $100 more? And the short answer is yes. Not because of all the stuff I talked about, because the fact that Google's going to offer seven years of updates. No other Android manufacturer has done this before. And that's great for someone who keeps their phones for a very, very long time. Not even Apple tells you how long they're gonna support a phone. They usually do six, sometimes seven, but you don't know if your device is ever gonna make the cut. So to me, paying $100 more, assuming Google doesn't kill it like they do all their other stuff, for seven years of updates, is worth the extra hundred bucks. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.